Hello and welcome to Coping with COVID. I'm your host, Brian Mulligan. On this program, we help tell the stories and share the successes of people and organizations as we all deal with this COVID-19 pandemic. Our focus is on keeping people safe and re-energizing the economy. Our guest today is Mark McGraw, president of Sales Engine. And uh, Sales Engine is one of the Sandler training organizations uh, which does professional training and development, and it's got uh, connections all over the world. So, so welcome, Mark, to the show. Pleasure to be here. Thanks for having me. So let's kick off with, uh, with your company and how you guys are dealing with the pandemic. I know that uh, traditionally you've had lots of people into your training facility. How are you dealing with all of that and uh, what changes have you guys made to keep your business going in all of this? Sure. Um, well, if you think about a, a training organization, whether it's sales training or service training, however it might, might be, you know, typically people come together physically uh, into a room. Obviously, that can't happen. Uh, fortunately for us, uh, about seven years ago, uh, we had a need at the time where we had a bunch of salespeople across the country and we had to bring them together. So we started to evolve into doing things virtually, video conferencing many years ago. It, in hindsight, it looks like genius. Uh, frankly, it was dumb luck. Sometimes you're good, sometimes you're lucky. So, and we were lucky in that case. And so uh, for us, even pre-COVID, we were probably 60, 70% already virtual at that time. Uh, and so making the shift for us actually was a little bit easier. Some of our clients that weren't used to it had to get used to a little bit of a shift, but uh, thankfully we were, we were positioned nicely before. So without telling us any secrets about sure. the business, um, the whole business, have you found people cutting back on training or finding people wanting training in these new techniques? How, how do you see the landscape for your business? Yeah, so uh, fortunately for our business, we've had, we've had zero reduction. Oh, wow. uh, so we're very, very pleased to be uh, integral in a lot of our clients. And therefore, you know, because of that, we've, we've had zero reduction. Uh, the number of new things coming in hasn't been as, as brisk as it was in the first quarter. Um, but, you know, certainly uh, things have held up really pretty well all in all. But there is a shift in terms of how people uh, sell and what they need when they sell. Big thing right now for sure is, is, is well, a lot of the stuff you're doing is how do we do a better job of doing, uh, you know, virtual presentations, virtual uh, meetings? That's the number one thing on people's minds uh, in our world these days. Yeah, and that's one of the reasons why we stood up this show is to be able to uh, actually put, you know, in the software business, it's called eating your own dog food. Yeah. And so what we're doing is standing up a, a studio here in the IATL, which you can see behind us, and saying, okay, well, this is how we're going to project ourselves in, into the market. Because one of the things we figured out is we're all going to have to live with COVID yeah. for a substantial amount of time. It's not going to just blow over in the, in the next couple of weeks and we're all going to get back to to what it was before. So, so in, in, in your customer base, how after the initial shock of it all, I mean, it, you know, it hit us like an enormous shock. How, how, how's your customer base dealing with it, I suppose, in the various segments that you're in? Well, I think uh, you bring up something really interesting, and that's that there's been a transition. I think at one point people were like, okay, um, we just got to get through the next 30 days or 60 days, and then we're going to get, quote, back to normal. And one thing that I see big time right now is this mindset shift that not everybody's there yet, but people are beginning to realize that back to normal is not gonna be back to normal. Because frankly, a lot of people have begun to recognize, you know, and COVID's done a lot of bad things, there's no question about it, but it's progressed a lot of people's abilities to use technology and become more efficient, save money, be more productive. We've seen a lot of that uh, over the last few months. And so a lot of people are looking at it saying, we're not gonna go back. Uh, right. Even when we can get on airplanes and all of that becomes very normal. And we're not gonna go back because actually there's a better way. Well, that, that, that's quite, quite interesting. And uh, you know, you're an entrepreneur like, like I am. So uh, you know, that's business opportunity. And, it is. and so you, you're seeing you know, business opportunity to train folks in these new, new techniques and so forth? Absolutely. Absolutely, and we, we certainly are spending time with folks in, in that endeavor uh, and helping them think about things differently and better, no doubt. All right, is there, are there any you know, thoughts about when your customers think they're going to get back in the office? Has anybody got a rollout plan or? or so 
So we've How's heard, that look, looking? We've heard from quite a few clients and I've, I've heard the same general theme. And they've, what they've said is, is that we don't expect to be back on a plane this year. And our companies have told us that. I've heard that over and over from, from many uh, clients. And there's two reasons. The company doesn't want the people on the plane. And the customers of that company have said, we don't want you here. We love you, but we're, we're going to have to do things virtually or different ways. And frankly, it's working really well uh, as people are learning how to do it such that it's not as necessary. And that's kind of a great point that you make here that we've seen uh, uh, is that not only with our sales and contact, you know, customer contact folks, but the customers have become accepting of the virtual yeah. technology. And that isn't it is, great. That's no way to put that back in the bottle. <laughs> that's right. And, and so even when uh, you know the fact that you got to get an airplane flight to 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 take somebody uh, uh, to, to lunch, you know maybe maybe there's a new business in arranging Uber Eats to go and be delivered at his office and you share lunch virtually. I mean, who knows how powerful this might be or and what, where it might end up. And, and that's part of what we're seeing is is that the level of efficiency that people are getting out of what they're doing. Uh, right now has really gone through the roof. And that's part why I don't know that we're going to, in fact, I'm confident we're not going to go, quote, back to normal. Uh, it, it, just for the fact that efficiency has improved so much uh, and, and the ability for people to touch multiple people in the course of the day. One other thing that's happened without a doubt, which is really an interesting side benefit, is sales cycles, and that you know, if you're not familiar with the term, yeah. it's the amount of time that usually it takes for a company or, or person to make a decision on something. They seem to be shortening. Mm -hmm. And the reason is, is that the people that make the decisions aren't on airplanes, they're not traveling around, they're not commuting back and forth, they're stationary. Therefore, we don't have to wait three weeks until these four people can get together in the same room. We can do that this afternoon virtually and that's causing people to actually move faster and, and things to happen quicker, which is fantastic for a lot of people. Yeah, that's a, gr a great point. I mean, the potentially that this new way of working, you know, the internet transformed our lives and smartphones and all kinds of ways. This is just the latest iteration. Everybody's got used to the idea of, of virtual meetings. And so once again, uh, it can make business more efficient, not not less efficient. And we've leaped forward. I mean, think about how much we've gone forward just in a hundred days. Oh, and, and we, we, we see it as just a data point of one, that we would have a sales guy on a sales trip and typically you could have, you know, a meeting uh, in the morning because that guy wanted to go to lunch and then yeah. a meeting in the afternoon and that guy wanted to go to drinks with that person. And so, you know, you saw two people in the day Whereas now you can see six or seven people or, or more in a day mm -hmm. just by dropping in on their computer. So uh, has, has Sandler itself looked at retooling some of your sales process or you think your sales training fits really well into this new, into this new order of things? I think the philosophies of what we do remain the same because uh, our, our philosophies are based upon human behavior and psychology. And, and by and large, that hasn't changed in a few hundred years. Um, I think the delivery mechanism changes how we communicate. And, uh, I, you know, frankly, I just re recently wrote a blog on uh, 10 ways doing things virtually is actually better than being together. I've, I've started to call it being 2D versus 3D. Uh, and, and I see a lot of benefits for being 2D versus 3D, uh, even beyond just the travel and the time. There are other benefits that you see as a result of that. And, and, and the net result of making our businesses uh, more effective gives you know, an opportunity for entrepreneurs to, uh, to, to progress their businesses. One of the things I'm going to talk about uh, on, on the show is turning data into, into information. It's what we do at Applied Information. And, the, and there's so many, uh, uh, there's a deluge of data coming at us. And so what I wanted to do is just uh, share a, a topic that's not actually talked about very much, but it underpins this whole business of how serious is COVID? And, uh, you know, some people say, oh, well, it's just like the flu. And it's, some people say, oh, well, you know, you've got to factor in that there's less people traveling, so you're not going to have so many car accidents. And uh, what this is, is a, 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 a graph of, uh, a series of graphs of what's called excess deaths. 
And uh, this is, sounds like a dreadful topic to talk about, and it is. But it's something that we've all got to realize, just the impact. And what these graphs are that you can see here is that, uh, you know, these are, and I'll pick Belgium over here, um, is the, um, the normal number of deaths that occur. And you can see that they're fewer in the summer and they're more in the winter. But you can see the huge impact of COVID, COVID as a once in a hundred year event of just how many people it's caused to die. And that's now just not even analyzing what's on the death certificates. But you can see that every country, now it's a bit later than, um, than Belgium, was the UK, but nonetheless an absolutely dramatic uh, impact of COVID in terms of how many people died. You've got various countries that did things quite well. And so, for example, Iceland over here uh, has got no excess deaths. Uh, so whatever they did, we can look at that and say, well, that's actually maybe, we don't have to analyze exactly why that happens, but that's a good thing to maybe follow. Is the Nordic countries, and why that's a, a good place to look for the comparisons, because you've got two adjacent countries, one's Norway, and the other one is Sweden. And they adopted very different approaches. Um, Sweden adopted an approach of laissez-faire, uh, let things be, we'll get her herd immunity, various other theories, um, which the scientists uh, and epidemiologists said, this is probably not a good idea. And now the data is in. So you get a country like Norway with no excess deaths. They've managed to uh, keep the impact of COVID to be manageable. But if you look over here and you look at Sweden, down in the bottom left-hand corner, that's the number of excess deaths of an adjacent country which is normalized for cultural and, and other things that they've got in common. And so you can just see that we've got to be really, really careful. And now we see Arizona and Florida and Texas um, on, uh, on exponential curves. And uh, that's just going to be a challenge for us to, to figure out. Um, but I uh, hope you enjoyed just a bit of a, a dive into the, into the concept of excess deaths. And it's one of the graphs and one of the, the data points to, to follow uh, to see just how effective the political process has been uh, to, uh, to, to you know, try and mitigate some of these things. And, and once again, uh, my, my, my standard pitch is just do the three things. Wear a mask, wash your hands, socially distance. It's not that hard uh, and, and we'll beat this thing. Mark, I'd really like to thank you for joining me today and sharing your insights and so forth on, uh, on coping with COVID. And so uh, until next time, everybody, Stay healthy, stay safe.